Hey guys, it's uh, Michael Mooring. I'm here at Hack PSU this weekend. Uh, that's why I'm wearing the crazy scarf. And I had the opportunity to run into uh, one of the guys from the Lunar Lions team uh, that they're here at uh, Penn State, uh, Hack PSU. And so we're gonna uh, get to meet them and ask them some, some questions. Hey everyone, um, my name is Jeep Ibrahim. I'm the outgoing president of Lunar Lion, and right now we have the pleasure of sitting with the current president of Lunar Lion. Yeah, hey, uh, I'm JP Monks. I am the uh, second year aerospace engineer as well, uh, getting my master's, and I am the current student president of Lunar Lion. Cool. Uh, so uh, tell me a little bit about your, your backgrounds, how, uh, how you got to where you're at now. Okay, um, so I heard about Lunar Line kind of serendipitously. I, for once at that moment, read one of the aerospace engineering listserv emails, which I never do. And it, I don't know what caught my attention. It might have just said Penn State's going to the moon or something. And I responded to it, got involved. And a year later, I was kind of in, I, I got a position with the team, and here I am now. Cool. Yeah, um, and so I didn't actually go to Penn State for undergrad. And when I was looking for grad programs, I was looking for aerospace programs that were strong. And I saw that Lunar Lion was happening at Penn State. And so I figured, wow, this department must be an incredible aerospace department if it's doing something this amazing. So I actually had heard about Lunar Lion well before I got to Penn State. And then when I got here, I happened to work in the same lab as Ajith here and uh, some other members of the team. And they got me involved and brought me in. Cool. Uh, so, so what's your what's your space story? Were you guys always inspired by space from a young age, or how how did you come to uh, to like space? Um, well, I pretty much was always interested in either fighter aircraft or space shuttles. Um, actually, one of my early childhood memories is my mother taking me to an observatory, and my mother is uh, in physics by trade. And I looked through her telescope, and I saw Jupiter, and I thought, wow, that's really cool. That looks exactly like it does in my textbooks or my school books, and that's so far away, and it was just mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, and I, the thing that really got to me was when I first saw a, a space shuttle launch, and I watched it on TV, and I just saw this big plume of fire and smoke going up into the sky, and it was just wow, this is so cool. I want to be a part of a project that is this incredible. Mm -hmm. And so ever since then, I've always wanted to be a part of space exploration. Awesome. All right, so. Um... The first uh, question specific to the Lunar Lions team is uh, you guys joined, um, you know, uh, kind of late uh, in comparison to the, some of the other teams that were, I guess you can call them founding teams of, of the Google Lunar X Prize. Um, but at the same time, you guys kind of, uh, uh, that, that doesn't seem to phase you guys at all. You're still progressing forward really well. Um, you just, you have, um, you give off a vibe that like, um, you know, you're going to do it uh, regardless of when, when you joined or when other teams are launching or any, anything like that. So can, can you uh, talk about that a little yeah. bit? So um, let me start by saying that the Google Lunar X Prize is fantastic. It incentivized, at the start, 30 teams from around the world to join this space mission to the moon. Um, and if you look at the history of incentivized prizes, this stuff really works. So the Google New Lunar X Prize was really great in the terms that it got Penn State energized to launch a mission to the moon. Um, that being said, we as a university have always looked at the X Prize as icing on the cake. Whether we win, whether we launch first, we're going to go ahead and get to the moon. Because even if we're not the first private organization to land, we will be the first university to. And that's powerful in and of itself. And, um, and that's part of the reason why we're we're so, I mean, we're so gung-ho, and we're not worried about being late entries into this, because we know that we're not completely constricted by that December 2015 deadline. Uh, that is the goal that we're pushing to, and that is a goal that we think we can reach, and we're confident we can reach, but even if we don't, even if we don't reach that deadline, we still have the flexibility to go and do it later than that and meet all of the goals that we have for this mission. Cool. So um, one, of, one of the cool things that you guys are doing is in engaging a lot of the students and building a community that's, uh, you know, growing on the spirit of, hey, you know, hey, we can get things into space and we can have our own little space program, kind of. Um, so how, how's, how's the adoption and the growth of, of the community that you're building with, with Lunar Lines? Well, um, 
First off, uh, we've made this community and a lot of the students involved in it realize that space is something they can do now. They don't have to be a NASA engineer that's had like decades of experience. So students have come to Penn State and the Lunar Line program because they realize space is within their reach. Um, so first off, that's, that's fantastic. Um, but we, what we hope to do here at Penn State is establish, uh, at Penn State and Pennsylvania, establish a private space industry that is strong, robust, and able to tackle um, the many challenges of this kind of growing industry here. Hmm. And that has been the really cool part is to watch Ajith in his past term really reach out to the Penn State community and show them that this is something that they can do. And it's, it's been really cool seeing how the entire community is really getting behind their line and showing that they like it. Um, Ajith's been to meetings in the past where he asked how many people knew what Lunar Line was and it was only two or three people. Um, out of hundreds. Out of hundreds. Uh, but now the team has done a really good job at kind of integrating Lunar Line into Penn State culture. Uh, and so when, he, when we ask that question to groups, it's 90, 95% have at least heard of Lunar Line and a lot of them have friends that are part of it. Uh, so. We've done a really good job, in my opinion, of weaving this project into the culture of the university. And it's made it great and easy for all of us. So it's nice. Cool, yeah. This weekend, um, Hack, Hack PSU Twitter account retweeted one of your things on, on Friday, I think, too. Okay, cool. So, yeah, that's cool. Um, so you guys, uh, you guys have a Rocket Hub campaign going on. Uh, Right now, what's what's the what's the purpose for that, and uh, I guess what's the goals and stuff? Well, do you want to elaborate a bit? Yeah. Um, so we have a Rocket Hub campaign going on. It's it's gonna that page is gonna be active until the end of the campaign. It's rockethub.com slash oh, lunar line yeah. oh, slash lunar line PSU, um, and so we are targeting. We're trying to raise $400,000 to support the creation of our rocket-powered terrestrial prototype. Um, when we get to the moon, we're going to ignite rockets that allow us to execute a soft landing on the surface so we don't crash into it. And then we will also use those same rockets to lift off from the surface of the moon and traverse 500 meters, and that's called a hop. Uh, but we don't want to do that for the first time when we get to the moon because there's a lot riding on that. So we're going to build a test vehicle that we can test in the deserts of Earth, actually. And so that's what this initial fundraising push is going to be going towards. OK. So it's, it's going really well. Um, it's exceeding everyone's expectations. Uh, and we think that's a sign of how much the Penn State community wants to see this succeed. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so so what, what's, uh, what's, what's the future like for? For the lunar lines, do you, do you guys have like a five-year, ten-year plan? Um, what's what's the future? We started to ask those kind of questions, like, what do we do after this lunar line mission launches? And I think, quite frankly, by the time we get to that point where we launch, um, we'll have another mission lined up. Don't know if it's going to be to the scale of the moon again, but we'll have another mission lined up. And what that's going to essentially translate into is this growing private space industry here at Penn State. The industry itself is growing and has already done stuff that no one thought that the private industry could be able to do. And personally, I'm actually a convert to the private space industry. Um, I was essentially the mentality that, you know, if NASA can't do it, then no one can. It doesn't matter if it's a corporation or not. Private space industry has changed that. And what we started to ask here at Penn State is, well, we see these Lockheed Martins, these Boeings, these NASA people doing this stuff. And we're starting to see SpaceX and Virgin Galactic doing this stuff. Where does the universities fit in? Universities that have a strong research tradition like Penn State. And we realize that there is a massive growing space for us in this industry as well. And that's what we're trying to tap into. So right now, we're starting with going to the moon. And quite frankly, we don't know where in that private space industry we'll end up. But we know we will be a leader in it. Cool. Anything there? Um, and as Ajith said, we are going to be doing these missions year after year, every five years, hopefully. My dream is actually to have the Lunar Lion be designed in a way um, that it's modular. So we have a main bus that can be reused for missions year after year after year. So we, 
we put, we're putting a lot of effort into designing right now, but hopefully we can reuse that effort for future missions and pump, out the, pump up the pace of these missions so they happen every four years mm -hmm. and every generation of students that comes through the university gets to be a part of one of these missions. That's, yeah. that's my dream of yeah. what this will turn into. Yeah, that'd be a cool uh, university space program for sure. Very uh, historical. Um, all right. Next question, if I can find it. <laughs> well, what did we decide? Oh, okay. Um, what? So, what do you guys think about the, the? So, there's there's private space, and then what do you think of like uh, hack people hacking space things like uh, CubeSats. 3D printing, open hardware, uh, people doing space in their in their garages. Um, what what do you guys think of that? Uh, you've worked on CubeSat before, right? Yeah, uh, I've worked on CubeSat at my university, not in my own garage. Though I think that'd be awesome. Um, I think it's really really cool uh, what they're getting to do, and I don't know if there's any groups. Uh, you you mentioned to me actually this Prometheus team Prometheus that's trying to build rockets, and I guess that would be a cheaper way to get to into space. Um, but it would be really cool if there are a lot of different rocket providers that could get these cubesats into space uh, alone, and so they wouldn't have to pair up with other missions. Because uh, it's cool to build these cubesats, but if they can't get into space, then they're not. I mean, they're not as cool as they could be. Uh, so I'm hoping that that kind of that hacker group kind of gets into the rocket side as well so it can be an entire ecosystem of full hacker space missions from yeah. start to finish which would be amazing yeah that's cool anything um i don't know i i guess i don't have too much to add um most of the glx or a lot of the glxp teams have started from very humble beginnings uh, whether that was people sitting around a table like us asking if we could do it or i've heard of some teams that kind of like started out of their garage and did fantastic stuff so um, s the space industry has shifted in a very decisive way away from governments that need billions of dollars to do it to individuals and people and small companies startups so it's definitely a trend that we'll see more of in the future cool um, any closing statements it's been great to talk to you. Yeah. You're, you're very excited about space, which is always good to see. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. It's a, it was an honor to, to interview you guys. So uh, best of luck on, on your continued uh, program and uh, eventually uh, moon, moon stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.